Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Rogue Wave podcast, talking comics, movies, TV, and pop culture every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, presented by Rogue Matter. We are the frequency for all things pop culture and the disruptors behind it. Join the movement. Go Rogue. Go to roguematter.com. Exciting stuff happening in 2021 on the website. Definitely keep yourself posted for the website. Tonight, Mandalorian Chapter 16 Reaction, The Book of Boba Fett, Birds of Prey, and more. I am your host, Michael Dolce, joined, as always, by my cohort in crime, the Lord of... What can I come up with this week? Hmm. The radio. How's that? Hassan Godwin. I'm hey. great. Now that I'm the Lord of the radio again. Thank you. Thank uh, you very Lord much. Lord of the radio. Good to, good to see my, uh, my adoring public. Lord of the podcast? Here. Oh, yeah, I almost had it. <laughs> <laughs> I just am. I'm, I'm just checking for you for next week. Why would you want? No, why would you? You had it right. Just leave it I, at, I, no, at no. having it correct. All right, Lord of the Radio. Just, Lord of the Radio. It is. So thank that my you. My host does not reach through the, through the Zoom window and and crush me. <laughs> if it could be done, it would have been done a long time ago. <laughs> That's not necessarily true. <laughs> That's not necessarily true. <laughs> All it takes is one one good day. Yeah. <laughs> this is very true so uh we are going to do a, a show next week by the way uh, i just alluded to that we were originally going to take the week between christmas and new year's off but they're going to have this uh, small movie come out uh christmas day we figure we get a jump on it so we will be with you guys next week so the good news of course is I mean, where else is anybody else going? No one's, else, no one's gonna be, people could be around. So, you know, we figure, we figure you can join, you can, you can be with us through the holidays and we'll be here next week. But right now, this week, we get to talk about the single greatest Star Wars we've seen on screen since 1983. That's not true. <laughs> Stop Spoilers saying we, you haven't seen it. we, we keep it to you. Keep it, yeah. keep it. Keep it isolated. No, no, no. To I, said, I said we get to talk about. No, you said we've seen. We get to talk about the single greatest Star Wars we've seen. Okay. Uh -huh. I got uh -huh. you. Oh, I see. I see where the double we came in now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We get to talk about the single greatest Star Wars I've seen since 1983 on screen. Awesome. Um, now, now I'm on your page. Now, right. now we can talk. All now right. we can go. He almost he almost figured out that Zoom thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's like, <gasps> Uh, I'm over here pressing we're buttons. We're going to like use the force like through <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like that Darth Vader. <laughs> that Darth Vader. I, that, uh, I'm sure that could be admissible in court, you know? So well, maybe, <laughs> I would, maybe I would not. In my apartment, I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. Like, happen? isn't that you using your hand right there? It's like, no, that's not happen? me. I'm reaching for him. I'm trying to help him. That's what uh, I'm doing. <laughs> and something that for some reason didn't work. Yeah, strange. It's just weird. If you haven't seen it, this is your only chance. Um, mind you, the internet had spoiled it like, I don't know, hours after it came out. So That's why uh, you got to see it when it drops, man. That's why you got to have that. You got to do the due diligence, man. You got to have that dedication locked so, in. So let's let's start there with this episode, right? I actually, we had chatted that morning and you said, stay away from the internet. And it got me so nervous that I actually rearranged my Friday schedule. I'm not waking up at, th at 3 a.m. on a Thursday. Don't worry. I'm, I was sound asleep. Uh, I had no danger of running into spoilers unless somehow spoilers were psychically transmitted to me in my sleep, right? Could happen. But I definitely the was spoiler working in the morning. Spoiler bastards I, are work over, uh, overtime, man. They, they work hard to, right. to ruin the experience for others. Right. And, and, and look, you know, my job is, is the internet. So, uh, you know, I, I don't actually work on the internet, but, I, you know, the internet is, is prevailing. You use um, it. You make... You make you make good use of the internet on a Correct, regular basis. Right, right. Like I am in, I am within the confines of the yes. internet. You're internet as adjacent. <laughs> as I'm working, be it on comics or on websites yes. or whatever I'm doing. You're I well within the, the internet, internet sphere of influence. A lot of times yeah. Fridays, I actually call information for next week's podcast too. So there's, you know, there, there is, there are definitely uh, reasons for me to have been on the internet in the morning. And you kind of made it clear, like, don't go on the internet. And I'm like, crap i gotta i gotta rethink i gotta re rethink my whole schedule today and and, and i had to i had to try to not an easy thing to do i had to try to come up with a way of telling you that this is pretty important without trying to imply anything that is important right. so that you wouldn't be like oh is it luke <laughs> <laughs> right it's right. like you know 
Right, which I wouldn't have done. And if and if I was too excited about it, I oh my god, did you see that? You know, right. and you would have been like, oh, I know what's going on. So no, uh, you, <laughs> you did a perfect job of alerting me without uh, without yeah. tipping your hand because stay basically, off the just, internet. Look, it's the season finale. You got to expect something big is going to happen, and that's just the way it came off. Like, hey, something big happened because it's a season finale. You knew something yeah. big was going to happen. Stay away from the internet. And I'm like, you know what? Uh, my schedules are so tightly crafted through the week because I have kids and there's this pandemic going on and, and you know, we're always blaming your kids, man. Stop blaming no, no, your no, no, kids no. for your, no, no, no. I'm merely saying that to rearrange a schedule, it's not something that's necessarily the easiest thing to do. It's not like I can sit there and I know, say, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I need to drop everything and now do this. But I, but I, but I heeded the warning enough. Like I saw, I read between the lines enough to be like, I better drop everything. <laughs> and I better go watch this. Right. And, okay. And I did. And and here's the funny part about it, right? The minute I was done watching it, and we're going to dive right into it. Don't get don't worry. We're going to we're going to go, you know, beat by beat in a little bit. The minute I was done watching it, I literally went on my phone and I ha- and and I saw I had a notification on Twitter. I opened Twitter, and what's there? A tweet from someone. Luke freaking Skywalker was the tweet. <laughs> was the tweet. It was the first thing that popped up. Yeah, everybody was. That's that's another one of the reasons why I'm I'm not on the internet as much as you on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. But that's another reason why I watch it exactly when it comes out because not necessarily because I I don't want it spoiled, you know. But I mean, all this stuff in context, all of it works together. It's all one package, right? The way these things are rolled out, the way these things are put together, the way these things impact you. And it's always a couple of factors. You know, there, there, there are a couple of, uh, of uh, you know, demonstrative moments that mm-hmm. go together to make the full experience. And having any one thing ruined for you or having right. one surprise, you know, altered for you kind of, kind of alters your perception of the episode because now you're waiting for the surprise instead of just watching it to see what happens next, which is pretty much how it's supposed to be consumed. But everybody is, you know, because unfortunately in our society, all of this stuff is monetized. So right. people try to scoop everybody else to be the first to react to something because they're the people who have made a business as dumb as it seems, in my opinion, People have made a business on reacting to other things. They make they make their <clears throat> they it's not exactly what we do. No, I know. We're a lifestyle. We're not we're 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 a lifestyle discussion podcast. That also reacts to things. A- anyway, never mind then. <laughs> no, no, no. That you're 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 making a good point. Go ahead, continue. It's just stupid because it it immediately foregoes the tact and civility or the, you know, the, the courtesy and the respect, you know, of, of something new. Everybody literally has to be at the spot at the exact moment of impact in order to have a genuine experience with something without some, some form of social media swooping in and cutting it right in half. So, right. You know, right. But I, something but like that, you, you don't want that to be spoiled. You don't at, want that spoiled. At, you know, like at all. Like I don't want. No. I don't want. Um, those kind of moments are why I get the secrecy around movies, the secrecy around TV shows. Kudos to John Favreau and Dave Filoni. Aside from an amazing episode, but two years in a row now, or two seasons in a row now, they've managed to hide the biggest reveal. And this one is even harder. I mean, this one is absolutely. Yeah, he, he was on much a, more difficult now. He was on much today, more. I think, or something like that, and he was talking about like there were so many there were so many points where they could have lost control over it because they had to have you know, they had to have Mark Hamill on set and they also had to have um they had to had to rely on their special effects team to be able to, you know, to do the de aging and the the you know, the 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 CGI for his face. Any of those um any of those pressure points is a potential right. leak, you know, that, that could just completely oh, yeah. spoil everything. Yeah. So it, it was really hard, you know, and I, I commend them for it because we didn't, no one had wind of it. This is, this also goes to show that most of these supposedly in, industry insiders who are going to scoop something, whatever they scoop is probably something that is in the, in the, 
in the pipeline to be yeah. s- you know pre-spoiled or semi-spoiled anyway right because when the industry wants to keep a secret nobody had any nobody got wind of it whatsoever there were people who were yeah. doing predictions about who right would who would it be to show up and some people did say luke but people thought that that either would be too obvious or it would be kind of um it would it would be you know for for lack of a better metaphor it would be a lever that they wouldn't want to pull like they wouldn't want to get right. a legacy character on there to just to you know just kind of wander through and someone as well known and as beloved as luke they wouldn't want to get him wrong in any way because we see with the last jedi what happens when it is perceived that that you got the character all all wrong so like it's very brave to to even to even consider the fact that they would want to even go back into the rabbit hole of Luke Skywalker yet again, yes. you know, and they did. They just, nah, we're going, you know, yeah. this, we're just going to go right in. We're going to go Return of the Jedi era, Luke Skywalker, green lightsaber, gloved hand, you know, it's Say and, and we're just going to do it. Say whatever you will about Last Jedi and Luke's portrayal um, and the characterization of Luke. Because I, to, to, to be honest with you, I'm in the minority. Luke's journey in last jedi while not set up properly at all by the force awakens and not set up properly at all because this is the first time we're seeing him in any way shape or form uh for 30 years wasn't a bad journey the 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 journey of the character actually could have made a lot of sense and i thought was actually the best part of the last jedi believe it or not yeah that notwithstanding this (laughs) restored the dignity to luke in a way that I think fans had been missing, and let, let's let's walk through let's walk through the last the last scene real quick though. Um, I, I remember the feeling that I got was 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 very interesting, right? Up until that point, I thought the episode hit all the you know it just did what Mandalorian's been doing, which is you know what everything kind of came together nicely. They foreshadowed things. They brought back characters. Uh, a little interesting that the male. Um, Mandalorian in that trifecta with uh, Bo-Katan was missing, but uh, you know what? I don't even care. Like, I just thought it was kind of cool. Like, whatever. Okay. We, you know, we bring everybody with us. We, we, not we... saying, I'm just not saying, but I'm saying, even though I'm not saying, right? I get you. Right. Um, but even little convenient things like that, like, they're forgivable. They're not like, they're not anything where you sit there. It, they're, it's not an indictment on the episode. It, and, and to be honest with you, didn't even, even though, really... even though you mentioned it, well, but I, <laughs> no, cause I noticed it in discussions post episode within the episode. Didn't even, it didn't even dawn on me uh, at the time. Yeah. Uh, because he wasn't really required. We don't even no. know who that guy was. A- you exactly, know? It's not like no. he was a character who was well-established and, right. and then they, decided to leave him out for whatever reason right it, it was just something that you know it, it, it it's not like i said it, it maybe the word forgivable is too harsh it's something that was just inconsequential like everything you know but they brought back bo katan which is great because they introduced her she's a she's a central figure in this great we, we expected her to come back that doesn't mean mm-hmm. it's always going to happen but it did um ming na wen's character you know uh, agent may as we like to call her you know you know she's back boba fett's back you know the plan itself uh, I thought was it was a really smart one too. A lot of times, creators don't look the, the, the and and I and I do this myself too. And this is something I would like to improve as a writer, right? A lot of times, creators will want to get to the most important part, which is get them onto the ship. And the means at which they do it is passable. In this sense, I thought them coming out of light speed and Boba Fett. Uh, you know, perceiving to be in pursuit of an Imperial shuttle made a lot of sense, right? You kind of knew John Carlo Esposito kind of knew what was going on, but he still kind of allowed it because yeah. you kind of, it's very believable. If I may put yourself in a Well, atmosphere. actually, Star Wars is, is, is unique in the sense that it is kind of known for the intelligence of its villains, Right. Whereas a lot of other genres, the villains are pretty much hapless or, you know, easily fooled. Right. Most Star Wars villains are kind of known for the for being a step ahead of, with uh, the exception of stormtroopers, which I, I got to tell you, I they're felt- not villains. Those are those are just um, those are props. Stormtroopers are just props. At some point, we've got for the get, hero. 
Well, actually, no. I got. I'll. I'll hold back my statement. You got a bunch of good storms. You got the Death Troopers. You've no, got, no. I know. I know. I know. That's, that's why other... I, will, I will withhold. I will withhold uh, my opinions on stormtroopers uh, until we talk about the the you know the dark troopers, and death troopers. Um, but but you you, you kind of get the feeling like he kind of knew something was up, but at the same time, because there's also a chance that there's nothing up, he kind of allowed it, uh, but also yeah. kind of took precautions to ready himself in case so yes again another another great job and a great performance by him also by the way and we'll get a little bit into into his it, it, i want to tell you what the single greatest part of his performance was in my opinion later on in the uh, in the episode so all this stuff was really smart everything was really well done mandalorian has a way of doing this it's just look it's a, it's a it's a very good show so up until the last 10 minutes i'm satisfied like i'm satisfied you know, I, I thought you know the Mandalorian's fight scene uh, with 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 John Carlo Esposito was was fantastic. With with Moff Gideon was with Moff Gideon was fantastic. I thought his fight scene with the Death Trooper was fantastic. I thought when he sucked them all out of the vacuum, I was like, all right, this makes sense. You know, you're not going to have all you, like how's he going to defeat all of them? He's not. Leads he did. You, leads you to wonder though why if you have an entire corridor of Death Troopers, why would you put them in an airlock? But well. Because they I guess that's to make it easier to deploy them when you actually want to deploy them. Let's yes. just say, let's fine. Okay, that, that I'm okay. I'm all right with it. There's an explanation. <laughs> yes, there's a downside to the explanation, but it, that's like yeah. a, I kind of get it. Because I remember saying, I was like, I guess that's why you don't store them in an airlock. Yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it also me. provided a plausible way. For Mandalorian to dispatch them and dispose of them, because at the but time, I'm saying it was done specifically yes. for that. Yes. You know, like there's no, there was no other logical reason for them to be in. Uh, in a, no, no, but the other logical reason is what you said. It's plausible. I, I, it's not the best reason. It's fine. It's fine. It's plausible, right? It's fine. It's 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 a it's fine enough. It work it works well enough, um, so that he can dispatch them and 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 within the course of the episode, I'm kind of like, all right, I'm I'm cool with this. So. All of this leading up to the last 10 minutes is actually pretty darn good. Like, it's just a good, again, that's what Mandalorian is to me. It is it is a good show. It is well done. It is a well done, well executed, good show that I am not a beyond the movies, diehard Star Wars fan. So it works for me. It, it works. Then we get to the end and the Death Troopers are, are knocking on the door. The single greatest, I alluded to this before, the single greatest scene of acting i thought that john carlo esposito did was the one scene not not when he tells them that they're all about to die <clears throat> it's that one look when they start knocking on the door and he just gives a like a little eyebrow raise and a little smirk watch it it's the most subtle thing on the planet in the galaxy for lack of a better pun in the galaxy okay. but it is so it, it just it just speaks to like you can't teach that to I mean you, you can I guess to actors but but that is what makes him such an, an amazing actor is that one he is like it, it is a like delicious look on his face mm -hmm. because he thinks and well, yeah, why wouldn't he he's think? one he's one yeah he's one yeah. He is eat like he is eating his cake he is literally that is a look <laughs> of someone that just ate his cake. <laughs> and, and he does it and it's it's two seconds but go back and, and just savor that savor that because he is savoring the moment so then the x-wing flies right in the background and i'm curious what your thoughts are but I, let me let me tell you what my thoughts are my immediate reaction is oh man the republic's gonna come and save them it's that's the first x-wing that just happens to be there and my next thought is you're gonna see a flood of them it's gonna be one of those like one x-wing what's that gonna do and it's like, wow, Cara Dune, she saved the day or some, you know, like, or maybe it's Bill Burr. He, he reached out to the, like, who knows? You know, my immediate reaction is that. And then as soon as it docks and they're just focusing on the one, I'm like, I'm like, nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> yeah. Cause, cause, cause we kind of know who that would be if that was, but they wouldn't do that. They wouldn't. Why would they do that? And then, and well, then, then theoretically, why wouldn't they? You know, no, no, like I know, the only reason the only reason they wouldn't do it is yeah. because they're known for not doing obviously good sure. things, you know, um, exactly. And then one of the, my reaction to that was, I know who that 
I know who they want me to think that is. Right. But it's probably, you know, when when that ha- that hood's going to come off, it's probably going to be wait, someone wait. else. We haven't even gotten to the hood yet. We haven't even got to the so the hood. All right. All right. The okay. hood and the green the green lightsaber. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm Yeah. I'm thinking we're at that stage yeah. in your description. Yeah, you yeah. Know? No, no, no. We're just at the X-wing docking in my in my description because at that point the X-wing is like okay, so they're not in my mind they're not I didn't see the barrage of I didn't see like the Avengers Endgame like look it's the entire republic come to save baby Yoda which for a split second is what I was like oh maybe they'll do this. No, they're okay. they're focusing on the X-wing and we go well we know who, like you said we know who we're who that could be. We know who they're trying yeah, my, to allude to. Like I said, my attitude was, I know who they want me to think that is. Yes. You know, but the, the, the conceit would be, it's not who you, we want you to think you, we want you to be looking in this direction when right. something comes from the, you know, from the opposite side. Right. So I'm not going to fall for it. Right. I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to sit here and just watch and I'm not going to make any, I'm not going to have any expectations as to what's about to happen. That's kind of how I approached it. And then walks out with the hood on and you're like, well, I mean, that could be anybody under that could be anybody under that hood. And then the green lightsaber. And you're like, well, did they cast Sebastian Stan for this? Is Sebastian Stan actually, are we going to see the Sebastian Stan is like the same with that gray Jedi nonsense and whatever. It's like a fan hysteria that now when you don't do it, right, it's going to be. But I if I would never cast Sebastian Stan. First of all, if I were Sebastian Stan, just to talk about this for a minute, I know he's down for it because he said, um, you know, I'm, I'm willing right. to do it. If I if I were his agent, I'd be like, don't do that. You don't want <laughs> you don't want to be Luke Skywalker. You know, like you don't want to do that. That's a. B, if he didn't get it 100% right, it's death, right? Like, it's a no win situation, is what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. So, like, I wouldn't, like, everybody was saying, why didn't they cast Sebastian Stan? Why did they go for bad CG? And, like, look, first of all, no amount of CG is going to look good for a person yeah. who is, I mean, like, you. We'll talk about the CGI in a second, though, because quite frankly, uh, Except for one stiff mouth movement, I thought it was amazing. So, but anyway, continue. You just said we're going to talk about the CG in a second. That's all I was talking about. Oh, okay. well, no, but you're so, saying you're saying in relation to it's it, it's never going to look good, you know, like right. when when you when you want a person to do something, right? You know, even the the even the CG in okay, the CG in in the the MCU is is some of the best de aging I've ever seen. Right. Like the Michael Douglas in Ant Man was literally right young. You know, it was literally the uh, the fatal you know the fatal, fatal attraction. Yeah, Douglas, fatal yeah. attraction. Yeah, basic no, it was a uh, basic, basic instinct. instinct. Yeah, it was yeah. basic instinct. Michael Douglas, like right in front of you, like holy crap. Yeah. Um, and then also the one that did for uh, for Civil War for uh, for Tony Stark. You yeah. Know? And they had they had a. Uh, Less than zero era, <laughs> right? Robert Downey Jr. Um, so okay, fair enough. There's some good, you know, but I'm sure that costs like way more than the, uh, it, the yeah. money for a television show. Yep. So you're never gonna get good. T- you shouldn't want a Luke Skywalker series. No. From the Last Jedi, should taught us, should have taught us, like how perilous that is to get like a full blown. What you want is your legacy characters like this yes to pass through your universe yes not to be part of your universe but to 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 walk on and off yes let them know that they're still there they're still adjacent they're still functioning somewhere they're still kicking butt taking names all that stuff but there's no chance that they're going to ruin the legacy of these characters By having them, you know, be a little too interactive, be a little too present. You could do, you could get away with it with young Han Solo and young Lando, right? Because they're rogues in the first place and they were basically criminals. So there's not a lot of stuff that's going to tarnish their reputation. We basically know when the two of them come around, 
when the two of them decide to become heroes and save the galaxy and, you know, around well, Empire Strikes Back in, and Return of the Jedi. Right. Prequels in general, though, you've already you already know the outcome. So nothing really is. It's it's not as if uh, Well, there's a chance there's a little too much they can tell you. Like, sure. You know, there's a, there's a little too much, you know, like the midi chlorians was, you know, this still sticks in the craw of a lot of people that they sure. destroyed the mysticism of the force. So it's, it, there's there's possibilities. There's always a chance. You shouldn't be afraid. You should always take chances, but I'm not talking about whether John Favreau or um, or Dave Filoni should have done it. I'm just talking about if you're gonna do it, this is kind of the best outcome you can I have, you. where the 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 character just wanders through, does some amazing stuff, shows off that their you know their their level of uh, proficiency, amazingness, you know, um, it, it give us all the the ooh and the ah, yep. you know, kind of situation. You know, everyone's talking about it. it's Luke getting his own hallway scene, just like Vader. You know, yeah. and if they've, they've made a, a million YouTube videos that that have well, a, it's, the, it's you know, easily, but, yes, it's a great parallel to Rogue One. Right. It's a great parallel to the end of Return of the Jedi when uh, Mandalorian and Baby Yoda get their scene. Grogu, they get their scene. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but again, it it kind of respects what has come before, um, where a critique of the Last Jedi is the entire point of Last Jedi was to be meta was to tell you know star wars fans to go f off you know that you that yeah you know like kind of doesn't matter and we need to continue we need to move forward like we didn't get any i think meta i think a lot of people get wrong what actually the actual problem with the last jedi is in my opinion i'm i i i disagree with a lot of the points that people have made mm -hmm. I, I don't really mind where luke ended up in the last jedi you know so much i mind the explanation he gave I thought the explanation he gave for it was weak, was was just was the antithesis of writing. You know, right. it's like I'm just I'm not going to tell you like it, it was arrogance in, in the sense that I don't have to really explain right. why I've made this decision for this character. You're, you're going to deal with it because you're just so happy to see Luke that you're going to be. And then once anybody complains to me about whether I have done my due diligence to explain the situation, I could just point at Obi-Wan and, and, and Yoda and claim, well, that's what these guys do at this age. You know, they go off into hiding. When when something starts troubling them, they go off into seclusion somewhere. Right. But it's it's not. I mean, if you're going to make that decision for that character, you go, you you damn sure better come up with a good explanation for why. And then everybody will accept it. You know, and everybody will be like, too, okay. To piggyback on what you just said too, and and again, this is more about Mandalorian and less about getting into the sequels again. Uh, but Something I just thought of too, and, and again, this echoes our, our both of our points when we talk when we discuss the sequels in general. Though, is why if you had a plan for this, which they obviously didn't. J.J. Abrams had no plan. J.J. Abrams was like, "I'm going to make Luke go away, and you're not going to know why, because I don't know why. I'm going to leave yeah. it to the next guy mystery, to though. figure it mystery. out. It's a mystery, right? It'll keep him coming back. It'll get butts. They would have alluded to. Don't you think Princess Leia at some point in Force Awakens would have been like, "Oh, you're looking for Luke Skywalker." Well, he's tough to find because every my son killed everyone on his Jedi. Te you know what I mean? Like, it's not something that Leia would have. And Leia it's like it's it's this it's this aspect of failure. You know, um, it's not that he failed. It's how we react to his own failure. Right. You know, it's why at this particular age, when you when you spectacularly make a mistake, are you? Are your is your reaction to be well? Just simply means I can never try again, you know. Right. Where you know, you know, Yoda's like there is no try. Like all the lessons we learned from from the the previous movies, do you know, there is not. do or do not. There is no there is try. No There's no. Yeah, it's it's not. It's it's just it's just not. It wasn't a good explanation. It was a very no, no, poor explanation. Not, not only was it not a good explanation, we, and we've gone ad nauseum about that. But in in the course of watching this episode of Mandalorian, I've now started thinking too, because of just, look, this was well-planned. And I'm not going to beat a dead horse. We've talked about the sequels and how they weren't well-planned. But another aspect that I never even thought of in, in the level of not planning was, okay, if the explanation for Luke in Last Jedi was not satisfactory to fans, and, and I, I, again, I'm kind of in the minority. I actually don't, dislike the explanation had they actually set it up had they actually planned for that explanation 
they don't even it's not even like Han and Leia. Han and Leia have like a kind of a micro scene in Force Awakens that kind of addresses the fact that there's a loss, that there's a hurt because their son has turned to the dark side. But don't you think that would have been important information for Ray to know in The Force Awakens? Like, hey, by the way, when you go to go to find him, he's probably not going to be in the best of shape because of this happening. And, and again, it's not going to be executed in this matter of fact way that I'm describing right now. I'm just merely saying there should have been at least something in that. And then the way Ryan Johnson handles it, it probably isn't perceived in the way that you're talking about. There's no plan. There was, there was, I mean, all of it is ridiculous. Like, first of all, why are you looking for Luke? What's he going to do? He doesn't want to do anything, so he's not involved. Without Luke, you still destroyed the Starkiller base. Without right. Luke, you still managed to do this and that. So you obviously don't need Luke. You also, And also, if, if Leia is capable of training Rey, which is what we saw in the third one, then we don't really need no. Luke. We have an extension yeah. of Luke, right? So that, that was really bad narrative fodder right yes. that was just you know like this will this will get the, this, is, this is really a terrible catalyst to to start the entire the premise of how they started the entire trilogy was terrible you know yes. we need to we got this map to luke skywalker for what we don't even know if that's going to a do anything for what the troubles that we have and b once the troubles came and we still didn't have luke skywalker we handled it so right. like we don't really need Luke Skywalker because Luke didn't do a damn thing about the Starkiller base. Right. Luke was around and he allowed the entire Hosnian system to be destroyed. Luke, I mean, so it was just like the goal was ridiculous in and of itself. So then when, when we find him, they hang a lantern on that. He's like, what do you want me to do? I'm one dude. Like, you right. want me to just attack the Empire with a lightsaber? That's not going to work. You don't need a Jedi. You need an army. You know, that's basically what he's saying. Right. I'm not even talking about, like, like um, the explanation was bad, like, that, that he tried to kill Kylo or whatever. It's no, just no, that, I agree. It's just that, well, there's, there's a lot that was missed by The Last Jedi. The, the the main criticism about Rey was that she was untrained. She shouldn't have the kind of proficiency with the Force. The Last Jedi didn't bother to explain why she was so proficient, nor did they give us the train a, a simple training montage right. that would have dispelled the whole Mary Sue thing in the in the first place. Right. Right. So like it was almost like it was almost a a subversive dis decision to just not be um narratively um faithful right. to all the other chapters that came ahead of it right. and you can't do that for for an eighth installment you just and, and, it's just not it's not you can do that with your own series but this is not yours you you can't attack it as though look i'm changing the rules of all of this right know. and getting back to mandalorian 10 minutes is all it took to expose even greater the sins of the sequels. I'm not for erasing. Well, it's a 10 minutes in revelation, but I mean, I'm, I'm sure that was a year in the planning, you know, because no, 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 the last no, no, no. But 10 minutes of me actually of, of me experiencing this. I actually when I when I got off watching it, like when I finished watching uh, and we'll talk about the end credit scene uh, in the next segment a little bit, too. I literally was waking. I'm like, we need to just I, I, I in my head, I'm like, Sequels never happen. That was my, it just, it never happened. I don't want to even, I don't want to refer to it. I don't want to think about it. I don't, because of 10 minutes, 10 minutes of here's how to do something correctly. Here's how to execute an idea correctly. Here's how to, like you said, pay reverence to the past without making it the focal point going forward. I didn't need, I didn't, I, I don't, in my head. Well, it's a Superman it's, scene, right? It's, it's a situation where it's, if you have a universe and Superman exists in your universe, why explain to me why Superman isn't there every day fixing the problems, right? Right. So your logic is like he's off somewhere, he's on Mars right now, he's you know, he's saving the Eiffel Tower right now. He can't be mm -hmm. right here. Yeah. And then you will have like um a circumstance where whatever your secondary hero is, or the, the you know, the the hero that is that is subordinate to the Superman mythos. Mm -hmm has to deal with the problem the whole story the whole point of the story is we i got to deal with this problem 
without Superman. I got to find a way to get this done or fixed without having Superman there. So in order to have, you know, in order for your character to, to have his glory in a, in a universe where Superman is there, but still to get the, you know, the payoff of having Superman show up at the very end, you know, which is what justice league did incorrectly. Um, right. You show the struggle of the hero, but you show the hero prevailing, just taking a lot longer. And then at the very end, you can drop the Superman. Like Superman is like a nuclear bomb, right? So right. when he shows up, the problem is solved. But right. he shows up at the exact last minute where everything has gone wrong. Exactly. And you know, but you, but your 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 secondary hero still maintains his integrity. Okay, so you still had Mando defeat one of the Dark Troopers with his bare hands, even though right. it was real difficult. Yep. And he he managed to jettison them all in, out in space. He also defeats um. Uh, uh, Gideon, yep. in a, in 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 hand to hand combat, you right. know. Now, granted, Gideon is not a a Jedi, right. but, but they did they did enough in the it be in the previous two seasons to set Gideon up as a formidable, like mm -hmm. as so you could believe he's going to be a formidable opponent that right. you have to fight, right? He believe and neither enough. since neither of them are force, yep, neither of them are force uh, sensitive. None of them have superpowers. They're both laymen. Yep. And so in a, in a contest between laymen... And in fact, Mandalorian's got the edge because if he didn't have the Beskar, yep. it would have killed him. <laughs> you know, that would have been... That would have been Which way... again was, a nice, was nicely done to justify the long trip throughout the whole season, right? Because that was one of the... And again, we call it critique. I'll call it a critique, not a criticism of Mandalorian. It just felt like, my God, this journey... It just feels pointless and going nowhere. But then he picked up, you know, these things that he well, that's also away, that also proves story. in narrative. If you go, if wherever you're going is great, no one's going to mind how long it took you to get there. Exactly. You know, so but I mean, that's it, it's hard to do. It's not easy to pull off as exactly. as, as as we both know. So it's it's a it's a master class on how to do a lot of things. It is two people playing in a universe full of toys in a, in, a, in a sandbox full of toys, but they respect each and every one of those toys that they're using, yep. right? There's not an overuse of you know a whole bunch of brand new things, although they're they're pulling they're pulling on threads from the far reaches of the of the Star Wars uh, universe, the expanded universe, like the Dark Troopers, the sure. you know the Death Troopers and um, the Dark Troopers and. Because they had Death Troopers in in season one, they mm -hmm. got the Dark Troopers in this season. They've got the Light Cruiser, the Imperial Light Cruiser. They mm -hmm. got the Lambda Shuttle. They've got a lot of. They've got the Slave One. They've got a lot of these like um, yeah. little iconic knickknacks for people to to really be you know to 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 immerse people into the galaxy. Like okay, we are in Star Wars. We are in the universe. You right. got Boba Fett. Like they did pull on some very serious threads in order to. In order to pull off the goodwill of yep. the audience, they gave us Boba Fett. Yep. They gave us Ahsoka Tano. They gave us like you know uh, uh, visual Star Wars, you know uh, yep. eye candy. Um, they but they also gave us Grieve Karga. They gave us um, uh, Gia Carreras. What her character's name? Um, Cara Dune. Cara Dune. They they gave us. They they managed to invent characters of their own for the series. Yes. You know, Fennec, you know, even like even to Dune Ming-Na, who had very little screen time in comparison to Cara Dune um, and Moff Gideon. Uh, you know, they, they still managed to establish these brand new characters, brought in some characters from the animated series and made them alive. Well, and then the brought thing, in right? Luke. It's 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 yeah. well, well, well Bringing done. Bringing in characters from the animated series is doing something new. It's giving a new spin on something we've seen before. So so, yeah. But it's bravery because you could do, you could get that wrong. You could totally get. But I mean, even though uh, Katie Sackhoff is probably a good bet because she's a right. She's a veteran actress mm -hmm. and she also provided the voice, so you knew she could pull the role off. But you could still you could still screw that up. And then Ahsoka was like the. That was the 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 linchpin of the entire thing working on. Once they got everybody on board mm -hmm. that they depicted Ahsoka correctly, um, everybody was in, yes. you know, for the for the for the roller coaster that headed on to the season finale. Two points before we go to break. Uh, one we'll 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 dwell on for 
just a second, and this is a point that I actually have been making many times, and you accuse me of being an ageist. What made this are. scene great and what the de-aging de does, the possibilities the de-aging does is we get to see, or at least I got to feel like I was eight years old again because I got to see my hero as he was when I was eight years old. There is an inherent disappointment in seeing an old Luke Skywalker drinking milk from a, from a <laughs> you know, some creature's titties. There is just, there is a disappointment to watching Kingdom of Crystal Skull and being like, oh my God, is he gonna, is he gonna hurt himself when he's, when he's flapping his, his whip? I mean, like, I'm, I'm in, you know, I'm not even 65 and I got daily aches and pains. I mean, we were just talking about the office chair I just got, I just bought myself and how it hurts my back. You get to see Luke in his prime. I can't understate that enough. I think it's something that if this was, and, and obviously the timelines wouldn't work out, but if it was older Luke Skywalker or older Han Solo coming to the rescue, the impact, to me at least, is not as great as seeing like, wow, this is 1983 Luke Skywalker. And that's why I actually, I, I throw the question out there. Is this the best Star Wars we've seen on screen since 1983? Now, I, I'm going to say yes, um, because I, I just think... I could make a case Rogue One was, but I actually, Rogue One to me is only satisfying for the last 10 minutes. Mandalorian is, is superior to Rogue One for me because I actually really like the Mandalorian. I actually really like his character. I like the characters they've created around him. I, I like the world that they've created around him. Uh, Rogue One... If I look back on it, I literally can, the, the, you know, I only see the last 10 minutes when Vader, you know, is in there. So to me, it's yes, that was the best Star Wars we've seen to me since 1983. Um, if we go that way. This is superior to that. Now, you might argue what the prequels are the best we've seen, you know, was just. As no, I, I yeah, all of it's been great, ex with the exception of three particular movies. So I don't really mind it. Okay. Because everybody, everything up until those three movies has been a product of, you know, of planning, you know, of well thought right. out, you know, uh, planning, well thought out uh, uh, adherence to, uh, to the rules of the universe. Yep. You know, things making sense. Even the force healing, which was not invented by either um, by Ryan Johnson nor uh, J.J. Abrams, was was used in a manner where it didn't break the universe, right. you know, um, or light speed, you know, ramming was was, you know, utilized in a manner or was explained away. And I mean, I, I talked to a friend of mine about, uh, you know, tracking and through light speed. Mm -hmm. They tracked the Millennium Falcon to Yavin in episode in, in episode four in A New Hope. So that, you know, the, the fact that they the fact that they're cowed at to, as to how the, the, the First Order is able to track them 30 years later, which you would imagine that the technology would have advanced by that. Right. Just a lot of stuff just break is universe-breaking. And look, these things are delicate as a writer, as you, as you understand. Mm -hmm. The rules, and people say, well, it's all made up, it's all make-believe in the first place. But the whole point is that the, the, the creator, the purveyor of the right. fantasy cannot approach it from the from the sense of this is just fantasy because your job is to is to no well, your job is to make it immersive enough to get people to buy it. Exactly. So if you think that all the lies are, are BS anyway, exactly. so you are you're not gonna you're not gonna set up you're not gonna build a foundation for them to be able to to uh, insert themselves into whatever universe that you are trying to create in the first place. I so, um. I believe that most of the most of the material we got up until up until and I think the what the sequels demonstrate is what happens to Star Wars when you don't plan when you oh, when gosh. you just treat it like hey, the average project. science yeah but I mean we you know we we used to judge Star Wars on the sense of acting stiff acting and you know dialogue and that kind of stuff which mm -hmm. is fair and all of it is fair um I just it doesn't bother me as much as it bothers other people but it's mm -hmm. a fair criticism but you don't really understand until you see something that is not planned. You don't understand how important it is, you know, until you see something that's terrible. Now, 
I think, I unlike, I don't disagree with you that it was a great installment. I don't think it was the greatest thing we've seen since 1983, certainly. I think more in the sense of looking backwards about, you know, what this means to me and how it affects me. I think looking forward, it means that maybe the franchise is in good hands and we are, we, you know, we're poised to get some good things coming out of it. You know, I actually if went they back handle- on a previous promo post for our show a couple of weeks ago. And answered my question and said, yes, give them the keys. Give them the, give them the keys to the Star Wars kingdom. It's fine. Well, I mean, you don't want to give anybody – you want to you wanna always open everything up as much as humanly possible. You don't want to give anybody the keys to, to, to one particular kingdom. These guys have earned the right to, you know, to our attention. They've yep. earned the right they've, – they've earned our um, – uh, I don't know what you would call that. You, they, they've earned our consideration. Respect. Like just like Kevin Feige, you know, the, yep. he's earned our respect right. for you know, and and the benefit of the doubt. We've they're de- the ben- they yes. definitely have the benefit of the doubt. There was a great. They, I mean, things Sorry, things could be bad. Things yeah. could things could go bad. I mean, the, and the first the first mistake they make that that's when the the, the wolves will come out. You there's know, nothing, you know exactly how this stuff works. Based on what we've seen now in two seasons, that they're going to make a. Colossal- that's not true because there there've been people complaining all the way up to this is why fandom is so fickle in the first place because there have been people complaining all the way up to this that the whole season is a fetch quest that they that mandalorian is a is a guest in his own show that it's just you know that all of this stuff is fan service which i don't even understand the term fan service because all entertainment is fan service you know so i don't even I, i think that's another throwaway uh meme that people use just like character arc and stuff like that. The way people use this um, a lot of times to justify their complaint, but they don't really understand the meaning behind the, the, the accusation, but that's fine. Um, also pandering is another, uh, another, cause I mean, definitely adding Luke is a form of pandering, but then if you don't pander, you know, you could mm-hmm. you could see why if they had added Sebastian Stan in, you know, there's people right. still complain that okay, well, why did you do? Why did you use the? Why didn't you use deep fake? Or why did you use the CGI when you could have used Sebastian? There's always you're never going to please anybody. You're never going to win. Not everybody, trying to please no. everybody. I think the best you can hope for is what they accomplished, which just was the best you could do is to be honest. Right. No, they 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 pleased enough people, but they didn't go out of their way to please people. They pleased themselves. They they basically said, "This is what we'd like to see. This is what we want to do." We and that's the only way you can before. be. That's the only way you can be honest in storytelling. Yes. Yes. You know, is if this this first of all this makes sense with everything, all the rules that I've established um, prior to this. Right. And then, you know, this is what I would want to see. This is, and I would want I want to see Luke Skywalker fighting an entire hallway full of uh, dark troopers. How do I get us there? Yeah. In a manner that doesn't break the entire uh, universe that we've right. established. That's last it. point. Last point too. Uh, before we get to break, um, one of the things that having Luke Skywalker appear in this show did for me uh, was it reminded me what makes Star Wars unique from just any sci-fi show. Because the idea, some of the things that people really enjoy is, well, Mandalorian, we get to explore the regions of the Star Wars universe. And I, and I think of myself, and again, I am, I am much more of a, I don't want to call myself a casual Star Wars fan, but I am not a diehard fan in, in any way, shape, or form. I never got into the books. I never even, you know, the animated shows, I, I never got into, right? So Slacker. just there's nothing unique about Star Wars compared to any other sci-fi show without the Force. The Force is what makes this universe, to me, the most unique thing. Yeah, that's not true. This is to okay. me. Yeah, I'm I get saying you. to me. I get by, you. By introducing Luke into the Mandalorian, it brings the Mandalorian into the story now. Where it seemed like he was a tourist, like you said, he was he was either a, a side character in his own show, or the the episodes themselves to me looked like what you would show on like a vacation slide. Like, Hey, look, we ended up going here. Hey, wave stormtroopers. Hey, wave here. Oh, we get to visit this planet. Remember this planet? Oh yeah. This is great. It, it, to me, it pulled everything together and reminded me that the force to me makes this show 
or sorry, this universe unique compared to other sci-fi universes. And again, that's just for me, but that was something that it, it was a, ha- a healthy and happy reminder um, what makes Star Wars unique for me. All right, what did you guys think? Yes, we'll talk about the end credit scene when we get back. We're going to do our Rogue Rage. Lots of stuff to cover. Comment in the, in the comment feed. I know Mike O'Neill is probably going nuts because he loves The Last Jedi, even though we always point out the, in- the inconsistencies, but he's always like, no, 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 there's no inconsistencies. But there's tons. Comment. We'll comment back. When we come back, Book of Boba Fett, sign me up, baby. I'm there. <laughs> Welcome back to the Rogue Wave <laughs> podcast. Frequency for all things pop culture and the disruptors behind it. Check out Button Smash. They'll be back with a new live episode in January. They just happen to uh, be Thursday nights, and uh, we have Christmas Eve tomorrow, and we have New Year's Eve the week after. I tried to get them to do a New Year's Eve episode because what better what better thing to do in a pandemic than to talk about video games on New Year's Eve? Because we ain't going anywhere, right? That's a theory. That's a theory. Yeah, that's gonna be bad, man. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna whine for a minute about that. Like, I'm not yeah. a big Christmas person. Not really a big Christmas person. I'm, I haven't been for a long time. Yeah. For personal reasons, and but New Year's, I usually try to get out. New Year's. There's a. There's an. There's yeah. no wives' tale about like how you spend your New Year's is how you're gonna spend your year. You know. So what you want to do is untrue, I guess, right? In well, in, yeah, I mean, it doesn't. Explained. But I mean, it's a superstition doesn't need proof, you know. It's superstition is a superstition. So, you know, it's the idea of just like I'm gonna be on my sofa, <laughs> you know. Watching Wonder I mean, watching. <laughs> no, I'm a, I watch Wonder Woman on Friday. That's a week, that's a week prior to New Year's, oh, yeah. you know. Right. So, like, what are we gonna do in New Year's? We don't have anything bold and new coming out for New Year's. I don't advise you to ever have kids. I really don't. Not I don't you want would not kids. make a good parent, but at this point, it's it's just it's just a lot of work. It's just a lot of work. Um, I have not had a it should be though, by the way. Traditional New Year's in five years. <laughs> well, that's you. <laughs> last year was like last year was like ten o'clock. My wife and I are like bed. <laughs> you want to see the ball drop? No. Hell no. Tomorrow no. it's going to be uh, the fir- the thing I don't like about New Year's. The thing I don't. You know, it's like Christmas. The the great thing about Christmas, even though I'm not a big Christmas mm-hmm. like holiday person, but the great thing about Christmas, it's an achievement. Like we've reached, like at the end of the year, there's yeah. presents. That at the end of the year, there's a festive atmosphere. Everybody kind of gets together. They celebrate because we got through another year, and we're celebrating. So if you don't look at it for the for the the value of the holiday in and of itself, the time of year in and sure. of itself is the culmination of something great. The, and and New Year's is like the secondary to that. Like that's the that's well, the I runner up to that. Literally starts your next year, right? But the problem with that is that right after New Year's, you're like, oh, we got to start all over again. <laughs> and if it's been a tumultuous year, as this year has been, the idea of like, okay, here we go, reset the clock. Some people <laughs> like the idea of resetting the clock, but some other people like, wait, we. We we counted down. We did all this work to get to to you know to January first, and now you still, you're telling me we got to start this whole thing all over again. So we talked about this off air, um, and then we'll we'll get into our rogue rage right after. If all the reports are correct, and and look, we we say that with a grain, we take that with a grain of salt. It will be around March April when, you know, the vaccine itself is 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 flowing. And the results of the vaccine can be felt. And we will be on that road to a to a return to normalcy. We will not be normal then, but we will be on a road to returning there around that. It will have been a full year. Which is kind of crazy because all these this is all unpredictable. It's all it's not unprecedented necessarily, but it's unprecedented in the time it is now taken to develop a vaccine and get get us back that the timing will be almost give or take a full year so our true new year's is in the spring 
<laughs> right? Like, like if you look at it that way, we, we can, I will do, we will do a March 31st show. If, if everything works, works out well, where we can, we'll drop a ball right here. Like, why not? Uh, well, we're still going to be in our house. Why not? <laughs> why not? Fair enough. Fair why enough. Not? All right. All the rage in the pop culture universe. We call this rogue rage. Uh, we're gonna have to get through this kind of quick because uh, we spent a lot of time on Mandalorian. Book of Boba Fett is its own series. Will arrive on Disney Plus in December 2021. Yes, we did not talk about the end credit scene, which was pretty awesome. I like uh, friends of the show Brian Everham. Uh, I, oh no, I no, it wasn't him. It was, it was uh, friend of the show Tony Atchison, who was like, "What do you mean there's an end credit scene?" Oh no, no, wait, it was Mark Lombardi, friend of the show Mark. Lombardi. Doesn't matter who. <laughs> Doesn't I want matter. to give a proper shout out. <laughs> Jeez. He's like, well then, well, then do your research, man. Write his name. The irony down. of it, the irony <laughs> is probably wasn't either of any of yeah, them. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> They're all friends of the show, and I like to give shout outs. Was like, what do you mean there's an end credit scene? I, like, I was watching it in Facebook timeline, and then it was like, all of a sudden, he was like, oh, crap. <laughs> like, you could, you see, like, the, 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 the comments. Well, you know, while we're talking about the people in the not in not knowing, I mean, this Friday is going to be, like, a behind the scenes of The Mandalorian for, you know, yes. for the sake of, in the, in the spot of The Mandalorian. So you're yes. still going to get another dose of Mandalorian. Even though it's yeah. not a full episode, so yeah, you know, so we'll hopefully, we we'll get we we'll get to revel in it for even a little while longer. I got to tell you, the high of that episode, I was still feeling it up until about Monday, Tuesday. Now, ironically, we record on Wednesdays, and um, so I wasn't it wore as off. High. So, so you're all so you're all low energy now because it's all worn off. <laughs> it, it, it essentially does wear off by the time we come around. <laughs> um, but that being said, the high of Friday for me was Friday uh, at lunchtime was I still felt it. I rewatched those last. I, I never rewatch things anymore. Like, I really don't. I rewatched mm. those last 10 minutes. I had to. I had to. And, and I watched the end credit scene with Boba Fett. Um, I, my favorite part of Return of the Jedi, I'm assuming it's everyone's favorite part, is the job of the hut, you know scenes at the beginning uh it, it might be top two in terms of the entire original trilogy it might be top two in terms of anything i've ever seen star wars wise is the entire sequence with jabba the hut so to see him returning i love that uh that his uh, right hand man who i will not even try to pronounce that character's name uh got fat and took over his uh his Ib. seat on on the uh on the Ib fortuna yes it's a bib for a plate of tuna. Think about mm, that. Bib for tuna. <laughs> bib for tuna. Done. Like now you're never going to forget it. Consumed much tuna in the time that job. I think that was the original was. actor. I don't know if it was, but I think I don't. I don't know if it was. Uh, if it was, I would not be shocked. I feel like that's a that's probably a fair uh, guess um, that it, it probably was. But yes, so we will get a book of Boba Fett. It was announced at the end. It was an awesome end credit scene. I love the, um, the, uh, the boys memes that I sent you also. Yes. Uh, yes. which I thought was pretty, which was pretty great. Those were good. Um, Those were good. Where Carl Urban is looking at the two of them sitting there. He's like, they're effing. <laughs> <laughs> Cut, you you yeah. kind of got that sense too. I like that. Yeah. She just drinks the blue beer and I'm just calling it the blue beer. Cause I don't know what else that was. Unless that's everything in star Wars is blue. Yeah. Every every liquid in Star Wars is blue yeah. in some for some reason, in some nature. There was a lot of confusion on this though. This this end credit scene confu- created a lot of confusion because it says people thought that that was that Din Djarin's story was over and that they were yeah. going to start with a yeah and that that Favreau cleared that up on the Today Show I think he said Good no that's America. not the oh yeah. whatever yeah. no he was and it will be uh, it will be its own series on Disney Plus. It will start to mirror Morrison and Ming-Na Wen. Um, it will st- it will be its, it's own a mini series and it will be set within the timeline of the Mandalorian, which is what I thought was originally going to happen. But then, yes, upon further thought, it was announced to come out the same time they announced season three was going to come out. And you're like, oh, crap. I, look, at this point, it, it's like winning the championship, right? If your team comes back the next year and doesn't win, you could sit there and say, well, we still won the Super Bowl the, the year before. So... At this point, John Favreau and Dave Filoni, if they decided to say, you know what, Din Djarin, your story's over, move over, they could do no wrong right now. They, they've just won the Super Bowl. Um, they're they're Super about, Bowl winners at this point. I don't know about that, but okay, that can fair enough. That really fade. Yeah. But I'm saying, whatever they decide. No, all right, that's fair. 
That's they've fair. Got, they've got a grace period. They've got a honeymoon period, which is what they like to call it in the uh, in the sports world, uh, to kind of do what they need to do. Uh, new a new Wandavision trailer had come out. A, a teaser trailer for TV um, has come out. Uh, what's kind of exciting is we know the release date is January fifteenth, um, and it is going to be five hundred and sixty three days between the last Marvel release and the next one uh, release when Wandavision wow. debuts January fifteenth. Is that kind of wow. that crazy? That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, considering that was the most prolific, like, you know, domineering series yeah. um, in, in cinematic history, basically. Yeah. Um, and the fact that we've gone this long without a peep from them, technically, yeah. you know, and yeah. that they were leading in with WandaVision. That's pretty, you know, that's 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 substantial. Hopefully that'll live up to the to the, you know, to the pressure. Yeah, the, the, the trailers we've seen so far, I mean, they're all pretty consistent in terms of the content. Uh, you know, they're living in some sort of sitcom world, uh, which we know from the comics that uh, Scarlet Witch is was cr was turned into one of the most powerful, uh, important characters in the 2000s and set the set the stage for Avengers Disassembled. It set the stage for uh, a revamp of the X-Men universe where yeah. she uh, with three three words, basically. Um, uh, reshaped the X-Men landscape that Grant Morrison had kind of spilled into. So along those lines, WandaVision is going to be very, yeah. very important. To seems, seems from the trailers it's going to have something to do. It's still going to have some kind of attachment with the reality stone with the, mm -hmm. you know, there's a couple of flashes of the reality stone in the trailer. Now you don't know if that's a memory or if she's absorbed some of the reality stone or whatever to, to boost her powers, or if they are going to say right. that she's uh, equal to her comic book counterpart, where she's one of the most, if not the most powerful character in the Marvel universe, you know, there's, so. There's a misleading don't know. scene and we can, we can trail the truth or trash to this one, you know, 10 second clip in terms of what we think the truth is versus what, what we've just seen in the trailer scene when uh agatha harkness which is what we assume uh katherine hans character is yes that is supposed to be her looks at vision and says aren't you dead you know or, or why would you think why would you think you're dead because aren't you and you you immediately are kind of to parallel what you said in the in the first segment we were talking about mandalorian like what you're supposed to believe yeah are we supposed to believe this takes place after avengers endgame are yes. we supposed to are we supposed to believe this takes place in an actual reality outside of Scarlet Witch's mind, which is where I think this whole series takes place in? I don't know what we're supposed to believe. Or is it simply going to be a scene in the show where Vision seemingly gets killed within the confines of the reality uh, that they create within the show? I feel like it's one of those scenes where we're, we're we're led to believe this has this is this is commenting on what happened in Infinity War, whereas I actually think the truth of it is going to be within the confines of WandaVision, not in the greater scheme. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give a trash to that one scene, and say that is not what it that scene is not what it appears to be. Okay, fair. Uh, I don't know if I agree. I don't know if I have enough information to agree or disagree. So this is a, this is a prediction on my part. This is this yeah, I know, but I mean, uh, you know, for, you know, as a counter to that, I don't know if you know, I don't, I don't know enough to go. Yeah, I totally agree. I can see, I can see how it could be. Yeah, but then again, you know, I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully soon. And finally, <laughs> in the uh, in the trailer, one last bit. There's a Winter Soldier Easter egg that you may have missed. Uh, this is on CBR. First spotted and shared by Twitter user It's Just an X on December 20th. Uh, the moment occurs when Elizabeth Olsen's Scarlet Witch appears in the exact same costume she was wearing in the Winter Soldier's post credit sequence. In that particular scene, MCU fans were first introduced to the twins, Wanda and Pietro Maximoff, while Hydra held them captive and experimented on both of them with the scepter that held the Mind Stone. So I guess the Mind Stone and Reality Stone, uh, possibly the same thing. So in case you missed it, there was an Easter egg there oh that's pretty cool finally okay. in a rogue rage 
House of Dragon coming to HBO Max in 2022. Uh, it launched back in May, the, the streaming service, but did so without any flair, uh, with Warner Brothers now moving their entire 2021 film slate to the streaming service to attract more subscribers. HBO Max has some other notable shows in the pipeline, such as Peacemaker, which is a spinoff from Suicide Squad, Matt Reeves' GCPD, Green Lantern, and the upcoming Game of Thrones prequel House of, Drag House of the Dragon. Uh, it's been adding some cast members, so Olivia Cook, Matt Smith will be part of it. Um, and we also learned that Zack Snyder's Justice League miniseries will hit HBO Max in March of next year, 2021. But uh, it was released in a video showcase that showcased their upcoming lineup through 2022, which now confirmed House of Dragons release date will be 2022. Do you think enough okay. time has passed to where people will get excited for the show? I don't think people get excited for shows anymore. I mean, if the show comes out and it's good, people will be like, great, Game of Thrones is back, you know? But they're still going to hold it against them, the how the other, the previous Game of Thrones end, ended. And so they're always going to be watching it for signs of shark jumping, you know, throughout the yeah. end. It's going to be haunted by that throughout the entire run. But if the show is good, you know, eventually it will outgrow that uh, that negativity and, and be able to stand on its own. But it's going to take a while. Yeah. And I don't even really hate the 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 last season of Game of Thrones like everybody else, but you know I'm not I'm not naive enough to think that that's not going to have any effect on anything. I, I agree. Um, I think much like the Avengers, though, where we got Avengers Endgame and then the pandemic hit, there is now enough time to where if Black Widow had come out. You're, it's still kind of a post-mortem to Avengers Endgame, whereas now so much time has passed that it's it, it just almost feels like a fresh restart. And so 2022 versus 2018, I mean, I'm down. I'm down for it. If that had come out a year after, which I think it was supposed to originally, I kind of would have been like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm good. I'll catch it when I catch it unless, unless yeah, I I'm the not about it. I don't know. I'm never in a position where I just completely disregard something. You know, just because of the, I, I, I would check it out. You know, but if it felt like the same, then I probably would be a little less inclined to be enthusiastic about it. But you know, I, it's, there's nothing that's going to happen that's going to make me not want to check it out. Yeah, no, I hear you. Well, what do you guys think? Are you excited for House of Dragons, House of the Dragon? Uh, what about Boba Fett, Book of Boba Fett? Chime in on the Facebook feed when we come back. A very, very quick spinning the racks. Welcome to Button Stash, the show about the best mustaches in gaming. Casey, it's Button Smash. It's the new gaming podcast from the Rogue Matter Network. I don't know where you got mustaches from. Well, I'm not shaving. But we will talk about gaming news, reviews, inside scoops, and retrospectives. Join us live on twitch.tv slash Matter on Thursday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern, or download our episodes wherever you listen to your podcast. But please, Casey, shave. New Beta Ray Bill series from Daniel Warren Johnson and Mike Spicer coming in 2021. This is from The Beat. Daniel Warren Johnson and Mike Spicer, the creative team behind books like Murder Falcon and the acclaimed Wonder Woman Dead Earth, are setting their sights on a fan favorite Marvel Universe character. Creators will helm a new five issue Beta Ray Bill miniseries next year. Said to spin out of Bill's recent appearance in Thor and the in-progress King in Black event, the series will find the character on a quest for a new weapon to replace the shattered Stormbreaker. reason I brought this up, Spin the Racks, is our segment where we get to kind of give you the behind the scenes of what's happening in the comic book world, which will then translate into the movie world. There's, to me, I find it kind of interesting that Thor Love and Thunder is filming... And meanwhile, we get a Beta Ray Bill, Beta Ray Bill miniseries also coming in 2021. 
Any any correlations between the two? You think do, no, do you think we're going to see a Beta Ray Bill on screen? I mean, it's possible. It's Taiko Watiti, you know, um, he's capable of anything, you know, and he's got a lot of goodwill, so he can make things happen. So it's a possibility, but who knows? I feel like it won't, it'll just be a walk on. It would be just cameo. I don't think. It I would agree. Be a big like deal. I don't think his storyline is going to impact what Thor: Love and Thunder is supposed to be, which is based off of the Jason Aaron's run. Um, Jason Aaron run, it, rather than uh, you know getting into a full uh, full fledged Beta Ray Bill. Um, mm. but I get the feeling like they're laying the groundworks already. Like there's, there's going to be something there. Maybe. I don't know. No. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it, it's, it's possible. Yeah. I guess it's possible, you know, but I mean, the only thing that's interesting about it is it comes out in March, 2021. But I think they rebuilds got Stormbreaker and, and Thor has Stormbreaker in. Right. In, so that's not I don't know if that correlates that how does what is beta ray bill without stormbreaker I don't know so well, like maybe, what would you do with that you know if this is Chris Hem if this is Chris Hemsworth worth's final appearance as Thor I wonder you know we talk about you know uh, Jane taking over the role but nah, I don't know now you know maybe maybe uh maybe right. they, maybe we get some beta ray bill when all is said and done Okay, maybe. So, real quick for you, because I know you are friends with him as well. The first issue will feature an interview between, uh, was it uh, Johnson and creator Walt Simonson, the Mighty Walt. That'll that'll be awesome. Yeah, that'll be pretty awesome. Yeah, Walt Simonson. Well, <laughs> he's met- got a lot, a lot to offer, a lot to say on that subject because uh, you know there's there's no. I don't think there is a, a better definitive expert on the entire Thor run and the character in itself and the North, uh, the, the Norse mythology. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that'll be, that'll, I'll be looking forward to that a little more than the comic book in and of itself. I think so. All right. Jam pack show today. Tons to talk about that Mandalorian uh, going through it again for the show brought back some of those nice same feelings I got. Very, very exciting. Hope you enjoyed it. Next week, we are going to be here next week. Maybe it'll be a special show. Maybe we'll do it like we normally do it, but we will be talking Wonder Woman 1984. We finally get to see this movie. And I'll give you my... Not only will I give you my review and my reaction, and you'll give yours as well, but I have a feeling, based on what I've read, as to why HBO had to pull the trigger and release this movie when they did. We will see you guys next week. Rogue Wave.